Well, hello, loves, and I am so glad that you are here today. Um, today is the third, the second video in our kind of stencil release launch um, videos. Um, but today we're doing something really fun, and hopefully it will um, help you in creating without fear um, kind of abstractly. And you can take this in so many ways, the techniques that I'm going to show you today. Um, but so let me just show you. This is my inspiration for today's piece. This I just love this. Um, and we're going to play with a lot of layers. And um, when you're creating abstractly, sometimes you don't know what the next step is going to be or needs to be. <clears throat> so the things that I'm going to show you today are um, important for creating abstractly. And plus, the, this, this way that I have found that I absolutely love helps me be able to determine which way to go in my project without, um, without any risk. And I'm all about that. And so um, I'm just going to show you those things today and we're going to create together. And so out here on my table, I have an 11 by 14. Now this piece is a, a quite a bit bigger, um, but for, for this project, this will work. This is an 11 by 14. And I've already put some papers down. And one of the things that I want you to think about when you're putting your papers down for abstract, especially for this project, is find things that are interesting, that have lines or movements or bold graphics or just different things like that. Um, and while a lot of this you will not see, and we have to be willing to let go and not um, hold that background sacred, um, there are these bits and pieces that show up. So for instance, in this piece, there's all these wonderful lines in here that show up. There's this piece right here underneath that blue that is actually this, like this same piece shows up underneath here. Um, I've got um, lesson 39, which is actually the title of this piece because of that paper that's showing through, which is actually like, um, so this says lesson 242. Um, all these little bits, this little arrow, um, all, all those little things peek through and are what makes our work so incredibly interesting and deep and um, all those textures and papers and all those layers really add depth and dimension and really create a work, beautiful work of art. So um, I've got my papers down here and the only thing that I thought about when I was putting my papers down was where might my interesting bits go um, and then also creating like I've gone over pieces of paper. So like this was a larger piece, but I put another piece over it because I want that texture. I don't want this to be completely flat. Um, now there is texture in it with the wrinkling of the paper, but then there's another le level of texture in this paper. Um, and so I put my papers up and down and across. And if there was a larger area that didn't have anything on it, kind of like this one, I added some, some bits to it to give it some more texture and add those little lines, those, those different things show up in all, all throughout uh, my piece. Um, so uh, that's the only thing I really want you to think about and think about kind of neutrally, but don't think too hard about that because again, most of that stuff will um, not show up and the bits that do show up, whether it be neutral or bright colors or patterns or whatever, are meant to be. And so, but for me, I like that kind of graphic feel. I like those um, interesting lines and numbers and things like that. That's what speaks to me, but you do what speaks to you. Um, these are collage packs in the shop and I'll have those listed. You know, if you find them interesting, you can, you know, use them. Um, and then, so I've got some extra pieces out here that I might cut up and put down um, as we start adding some layers. And then I've got some little bits of things over here. 
that I will add probably to a second or third layer because if I put them on now, because I, I really think I want some, some of this coming through um, more prominently, um, if I put them down in this first layer, they would probably get covered up. And I don't want to be dictated about what layers come next by this one little piece. So if I, had put, if I put this down, and that's something that I really wanted to show up, I would not paint over it. And it would hinder me from creating, creating the actual piece itself. So this will go down after I get my initial layers and I see where it's going. Because right now, I don't know. I have an idea, but I don't. Um, so I have those out here. And then I have my stencils out here that I really want to use. And um, I have chosen ones that have a very kind of graphic feel or interesting pattern. Um, because they're going to be the parts that all of the interesting, all this is a stencil, this is a stencil, 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 all of those. And we're going to continue to kind of layer those and build up that layer. And the texture on here is phenomenal because of those layers. So um, I've, I've just got some interesting patterns out here. I've got a smaller one. I've got this, the bigger one of that. I just love this stencil. Uh, and I've got some kind of graphic elements, and I don't know how I will use them all. But I'm going to have them ready, and I'm going to show you my, my, my trick to knowing what to put down. Um, and then, you know, of course, numbers. That's just, that's a given. And this is super groovy. <laughs> and um, just some really interesting pattern. And then, you know, if I feel like I need something else, I can go get another stencil but I like to have everything ready because as soon as I stop and have to search for something it kind of shuts down the mojo and um, it's hard to kind of get back in there if you've been search trying to search around for something. Um, so with that that is kind of the basics to start with with where I'm at on my my project. Now I'm going to just set these aside over here for just a second. For this um, project and for this technique, um, I, ha I use papers. I use deli papers and I use tissue papers. And I will create my pattern and my pa paint swishes, like my main focal point paint swishes, were painted on deli paper. And then I could move them around and see where they fit. So um, I'll, uh, I know that might not make sense to you at the moment, but I'm gonna set that over there and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I've just, this is dry wax paper. Um, I know they make them in bigger sheets, um, but this is a nice manageable size um, and I can, I can kind of keep them in a stack and it, it works perfectly. Now the reason that I'm using um, dry wax paper or deli paper, make sure that it's not too waxy or this won't work, um, is because it's see-through. Because I can have a layer underneath and get an idea of how it works. Now tissue paper is even less see-through. Plus, it doesn't hold up to the paint as well as um, as well as deli paper. Now, and there might be, and maybe wax paper would even be better, but again, it's waxy and the paint would tend to beat up on it. So I found that the deli paper is a perfect combination. So I wanna, what I wanna do right now is I wanna make my, my papers, then we'll bring our piece back and we'll start laying our background down and then you'll see how we use these papers to create our abstract without actually committing to anything. So I am going to get a clean palette for one and I'm going to put out some color here. I'm just gonna grab my favorites. And if you don't know where to start when you're creating, grab your favorites. Uh, let's see. 
That's a good one. And then quinacridone. Nickel azo gold. Yes, please. Okay, so I want some teal. Of course I want some teal. So I'm just I've just chosen my favorite colors here. And I'm just going to put those out. And I'm going to get a fairly wide brush. This is a one and a half inch brush. It could go wider. But because my paper's relatively small and the piece that we're working on is small. And my brush is somewhat wet. You saw I just took it out of my dirty bucket. I want to create some interesting lines. This is all you, I want you to do is just create some lines. Several papers in your color. So I'm going to put some more of this out. And use your left hand. Make swirls. Keep your brush strokes. Don't make it perfect. Just make interesting bits. So this one could be just <clears throat> lines. Maybe anything goes. And I'm just going to keep creating my these papers like this with m some of my favorite colors. Um, until I feel like I've got a fair amount of and variety of shapes and swirls and maybe I want to do circles. So maybe I want to and I'm using my left hand so that I have less control. And so maybe this one will just be circles. Okay, so you get the idea of what I'm doing with this. So I'm going to do get my favorite colors out, make a bunch of these, and then um, then we'll come back and we'll we'll do our tissue paper, which is another layer, um, and then I'll show you how we combine those without any risk and be able to layer up our our layers. Put our we'll put our background down and um, all that goodness. But right now I'm going to build up my papers.
Okay, so we've made our papers. So I made the deli papers with the color and then I went back with my tissue paper and I made a bunch of random with my stencils that had some cool patterns that I really liked with my spray paints. Um, and those are drying. So while those are drying, we're gonna come in and start building up our layers, our background, to put our wonderful papers on. So I've got out here some Lucas um, acrylic in beige and raw umber. Um, I've got some gray and I've got some muted gray. I might throw a little bit of that in. And then I've also got my um, gesso, my gesso out here um, to kind of throw in the mix to kind of lighten things up. When you're start, when I when I'm starting this way with the way that we're doing it, um, and which is a really great way to move forward in an abstract. Um, I am going to now take and start adding paint to my background um, with neutral colors, grays, beige, browns, something like that, very neutral, because the color that we're going to be bringing in is going to be from our deli papers. Um, and so we wanna keep that neutral. However, we don't wanna keep it boring. And so I am going to use my stencil, maybe this one, maybe another one um, that I really like the pattern on. And I'm going to put my paint down and reverse stencil, pull that paint up and um, get some really good <clears throat> um, kind of pattern. Um, it also helps us kind of mute this down and break all of this paper up. Um, plus it gives us texture. And so texture to me is key because even though we've got texture from our papers and we're gonna have more texture, all of that adds depth. All of that adds super grungy interest. It's so fascinating to see all of the different types of layers throughout a piece of art. So um, that also will give us texture. So I'm going to mix up my paints and just kind of see how it flows. Um, I'll get a clean palette out here. And um, I want to make sure to keep my paint colors moving so that um, I don't want to just have all one color. So if I have a mixture of all of these neutrals on my brush as I'm painting them on, it again will make it more inter interesting. So we can neutralize the background, tone this down, and still make it interesting. And then we'll begin to see what's peeking through and we'll, it will help tell us where the, what the next step is going to be or what areas we want to focus on. So that's what I'll be doing next um, while our papers dry.
All right, we're moving on. <clears throat> so I've got my background down and dry. I've got all my papers dry. So, and I have put them into their color category for the most part. I've got my pinks, I've got my teals, I've got my greens. I'm dropping them because they're all over the place, which I love. The more paper, the better. Um, I've got my orange, and I will say this, only do three or four colors. Don't get carried away because it'll give you too many options, and then um, simple is best. Then I've got <clears throat> my a few colors of my pattern and my tissue paper, and these are all my deli papers. And I've got my deli papers in blacks, and then uh, my tissue paper in blacks. So I've, I've got them separated, well, for the most part. <laughs> um, and then I also did just a couple, a few little bits of white, just in case, you never know. So I've got them all separated out, plus I've got some, my, my bits, my extra little bits here. Um, so everything is ready. Background, all of our parts are ready. Now is the fun, well, it's all fun. The background's fun, everything's fun. Now we get to arrange them. And the reason that I did deli paper is because, again, it is more see-through. So I'm going to set these over here. So I've got a little bit of room. Move this out of the way here. And what we start to do now is we start to grab our papers to see which ones we like. Like, does this one speak to me? I kind of like that. Kind of like this one. Do I even like orange? Is orange a good one? I don't know. I may not even use any orange. You see, that one's kind of cool. <clears throat> so I like that. I'm going to grab some green here. And, oh, there's my other whites. <laughs> uh, maybe just a, t and, and here's the thing too. So maybe you like all of this, or maybe I like just this little bit. We're go we can take them apart and, s and rearrange and play. So I'm, I'm going to find the ones that I like the most. I like this one so far. And the green is... I'll only use a little bit of green um, because it is very, very bright, but it's nice to have that pop of color. Um, so I kind of like some of this little green bits here. I kind of like that. It's different, and I'm looking for different shapes. So like this one is somewhat similar to this one, so I probably wouldn't use that. So I, this has got some different kind of straight lines and things like that. So that might be nice. Plus I can cut out just one of them. So I like that one. And then I'll pull over my teal. So this is kind of fun. It's got some different shapes. Let's see what, ooh. I kind of like this one. All right, let me look at my magenta. I did I did a lot of magenta because I love magenta. Ooh. Ooh, that, one, that one's kind of cool too. Ooh, I got a square in there too. Okay, I kind of like that. I kind of like this one too. Okay, I'm going to set these aside. I think I've got the ones that I want. And now we are going to kind of play a little bit. So, so we can, it's transparent enough that you can see what's happening underneath. I kind of like this layout like this.
that's going to be just a pop so a pop of color kind of like this I could almost do that and what I'm looking at is I'm wanting to connect them I don't want them to be like this you could you could do that but for me and and trying to um, Put a composition together I like to have them feel somewhat connected I'm also looking at the rule of thirds so I've got this instead of it being straight in the middle I'm going to offset it and bring this one down instead of it being straight in the middle it's more interesting that way and then this pop of color so here's where we start to just kind of just go for it So I kind of like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim away on the sides here. Okay, so here's what we're left with, like this. And then we've got this little bit here. And the great thing about this is we can just move it around. Maybe I don't necessarily like that, but I like this. Or I can turn it around and go like this. I really do like this up here like that. Kind of kind of off center a little bit. I like this like this because it kind of brings it down to the bottom. I'm not quite sure about this one. Somewhere in here. Okay, I like that. That looks good. Now, um, now we <clears throat> we get to take a look at the rest of the composition. Like, what else is happening here? So, do we want additional papers underneath? So, this is where our bits come in. So, do we want some papers kind of peeking out? And you can see how transparent that is. How that will show up. Do we want that peeking out? And these, we're going to come back over with some paint so that they're not, and, and integrate everything into the piece. But we can kind of move things around now, add some extra parts. Oh yeah, this is the one. Discovering your strength. Okay, so um, this is fairly dry, dry enough to move on to the next layer. I've got out here on my palette the colors that we started with in the background. And I always want to start light when I start editing. So let's look at the example. So all of these colors were just like this. All of my background parts were just like my background parts. And I chose to start editing out areas edit out here, edit out here, and I left some of these areas exposed, edit out here, I kind of came around my curve here. Um, and then what I did was I, after all of that and I've edited, I came back with some additional papers to kind of bring some of that back. And it's a back and forth, it's, it's a dance. So I'm going to, I start light, I'll typically start with a little bit of gesso and a little bit of beige maybe a tiny bit of raw umber just to kind of 
warm that up a little bit. Add a little bit of water. A little bit more gesso. And then I'll, I'll uh, I'm making it somewhat watery because if I don't like what I've gone over, I can wipe it up. And when it's a little bit sheer, you can still see the layers underneath and still edit out and kind of bring it together without it um, taking away some of that background. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and start editing where I think I need and to kind of start bringing it together.
All right, loves, here is where we are. I have got this now dry. There was a lot of layers, so it took a little bit of time to dry and I walked away. Um, while off camera, I did add a couple more bits of my papers um, just here and there and kind of thickened up a little bit of this black line. Um, and that's really pretty much it that I've, that I've done so far. So, <clears throat> Um, now what I want to do is I want to um, just, I, and stepping away from it was good because I wanted to, to kind of just get a fresh eye and take a look. And I want to come in now and I want to kind of just further add some of this brown in here because it kind of warms up and I'm using a soft pastel. Just kind of warms up and adds one more little le level of dimension. Um, I might use that in just a second. Okay, so I've got my um, charcoal pencil out here and I just want to come in now and really kind of make some super scratchy lines. guys that looks amazing amazing I think I'm going to add one last thing and pulling out just kind of a larger brush here that I use for some splatters Ooh, that is awesome I couldn't have planned that better <clears throat> And I'm going to do the same thing with some white. All right, don't want to overdo it. <clears throat> I love it, love it, love it. Looks so good. Now, the only other thing that I would do is possibly shade the edge here with my soft pastel. I just kind of like that dark edge. You guys, that is gorgeous. All right, was this not the funnest technique for abstracts, for anything really? I love creating the papers and being able to play with them, see the layers underneath and what you know you need or what you're looking for. Um, the versatility with the papers and then being able to layer on top of each other, the texture it adds, um, just the fun and experimenting and play is, is all worth it. And then you, you're not afraid to try something, to try a color or try a pattern because, it, you know, if you don't like it, you can just take it off and, um, you haven't, there's, you know, you haven't harmed the piece that you've been working on. And so I just love this technique. I hope you try it. And if you do share it with me, share it with me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, but um, check out the new stencils in the shop, all the stencils that we used for the papers and everything. Um, they're so much fun. I'm just having a blast with them. Um, and try this out. Try the um, layering um, process with the deli papers and the papers. And then um, just have fun and create. All right, my friends. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed today's project, I hope you subscribe and like and hit the alarm bell so that you never miss a video. Um, it means the world to me. All right, I will see you tomorrow.